I think one of the things that I'm most excited about uh, right now is I have a chance to be with folks like yourselves, here, church planners in Chicago, artists in New York, artists in LA, Seattle. We were in Thailand a couple years ago. We have friends that are starting an art center in Germany. Uh, is to see that uh, the kinds of questions that people are asking are very similar. And the reason I get excited about that is we can take great comfort and then we're not going insane. That we're not the only ones that are asking these questions. So there's a sense in which, as a community, we can discern these things. And I, I, well, this is certainly a human desire, but certainly for a lot of artists, this sense they want to know they're not alone. And um, so, and that we are not alone with these questions, we can work them out together. That's one thing I'm excited about. A second, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to see pastors who are willing to ask uh, questions that they may not have asked before, or questions that make them feel maybe uncomfortable, or, art, or, or pastors who are willing to go see music or see visual work or see modern dance that is just downright strange, weird, upsetting, but they're willing to stay in that tension in the same way that I see Jesus going to places and being in settings with the so-called tackle pastors and sinners uh, and just like staying there, like remaining there. Of course, being faithful to God, but being in the presence and saying, I don't understand, but I'd like to understand. Or even, uh, let's, say, let's say with horror movies, there are uh, uh, believers like Scott Derrickson uh, he made uh, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, and he's done other things sort of in the horror genre. You may get to the place where you understand how a Christian can be involved in the making of horror films, but not agree with it. And I love that. I love that pastors, I see pastors that are willing to take that mature step of saying, I want to understand, but I don't maybe agree or I don't like, but I'm still with you. I think that kind of maturity and that kind of demonstration of care is so powerful for artists, I think also for the church. And the third thing I'm excited about is to see how many artists from different churches and how many pastors and church leaders from different churches are willing to do things together. And I, again, I feel so strongly that the hope of the church rests in this kind of collaborative work. And I'll just say this again, people have heard me say this before, but Dallas Wood once said that if the churches of one city pool together their common material and human resources, they will have more resources together than they'll ever know what to do. And it's in that sense that the gates of hell cannot prevail. And when churches do that with respect to the arts, which is not the only thing that matters, but with respect to the arts, something very powerful can happen. And I think the kinds of culture making, the kinds of patronage, the kinds of encouragement that artists need, A, to be faithful wherever they are, no matter how small the setting or venue is, they can be faithful gracious, winsome presence of Christ there, but it also, I think, will make possible, possible the sort of generation of great novelists and great painters and great filmmakers who are making very good work, serious work, difficult work, but work that enters into the whole milieu of our society. And really what we need is sort of a faithful community of churches who are willing to commit to the next 40, 60, 80 years not to make one great movie, to make a hundred. That's what it'll take really to change the way that people think. And the one thing I didn't mention earlier today, I'm going to say this now. Uh, has it ever struck you strange that there are so few movies where, say, conservative Protestants or evangelical Protestants are depicted in intelligent, gracious, normal, desirable, attractive ways. Well, I mean, it bugs me, it bugs a lot of people, but I do ask myself that perhaps the reason why we see so many weird, dysfunctional, dislikable, say conservative or evangelical characters, is because screenwriters have never met an intelligent, thoughtful, gracious, humble, winsome, evangelical Christian in this case, right? But if we were to be out there, if artists are to be out there and get into the mix and pastors are encouraging them and everybody else in the church is in on it. You know, moms and dads and aunts and uncles and business people and teachers and simple folk and complicated folk are in it. Then perhaps screenwriters and playwriters and painters and poets will have an excuse to think differently about the evangelical community. And that excites me. I think it's possible and I think it is happening in some settings.